Hello YouTube, welcome to some 47 game in action, sit back, relax and enjoy guys. So let's just talk about last epoch, what's happened the last couple of days, talk about the build, talk about items, passives, all that good stuff. So let's get right into it. So last epoch did a phenomenal job with the launch this league, I compared to last league I feel. Um, last league was a bit of a, we took them 1.0 this time, they had a little bit of hiccups here and there but they resolved it quickly and everything was working fine and smooth. I have props to them amazingly and well done. The whole uh, lead mechanic and the update that they've uh, implemented this time is fantastic. Uh, the Nemesis really, really enjoying it. Uh, I think the general consensus is people aren't currently enjoying it. Uh, a little bit of the crafting, a little bit of the incentivized to engage with it. And that's what you want. You want player engagement and build diversity, which is really healthy for the game. Um, so guys, I really I recommend that you go and check it out and play the game. Uh, so far, really, really good, as well as the bossing content, as well as the harbingers and the whole pinnacle boss system. Also well done. Of course, there's some flaws here and there, but mostly it's in a positive direction the listening community and implementing a feedback they got great quality of life stuff they've also implemented and um, they keep it going this game is going to be absolutely all it's really an awesome great game it's going to get even better as time goes on if they continue with this current pace uh, so from my side uh, really not too much complaints um, we're currently trying a meta build well meta is the sorcerer which is in mana stacker so from this side we're talking a spark charge sorcerer and there's a different variance uh, to it so everybody has their own thing um, so mine's just a little bit similar but it's a little bit different uh, basically doing a circle of fortune so whatever we got here is self farm and you can do it yourself um, so it's nothing too crazy so i'm just going to give it a bit of pros and cons builds clear is really good single targets pretty good as well um, tanky really really tanky uh, i'll tell you that a uh, bit of a cons i could say is that uh, you just need at least one unique item and um I would say the mana, ma mana management could be a problem because again the very there's different variety of spark charts miners are just a more heavy mana cost version of it um so I, by by no means i'm taking credit uh, like taking credit for like creating the build or anything like that there's a, there's a bunch of different uh last epoch creators that uh, i've been looking at so definitely check them out as well for different ideas and suggestions and whatnot and again very flexible build so let's just get into the crux of it um so first and foremost the two things that need to make you need to make note of is um i'll show you over here so under the sorcerer node uh arcane current it says Oh, just remember the the bonus uh, we have when you have four points at your skills which the cost at least 40 mana in fixed spark charge on it 100 chance okay that's an important node to take to note of so it's a spark charge build right so that on top of that the fragment of enigma is by far the mandatory item i would say because of scaling of two lightning damage for spark charge per intelligence so this is where the intel stacking comes into play okay uh, so that's by far the most important item that you need to get the build at least doing a decent amount of damage Like I said, there is a variance for melee and this and that where you get more damage for spark charges chance on hit all that great stuff So you're more than welcome to check out this build. This is more of a range play style. So what we're doing um, That's important interaction that side. So what we're doing is we are increasing the cost of um, Frost claw by as much as possible um, to proc the cost for spark charge on hit right so we'll go through the points and then we'll go through it together quick come all the way down to the right side i mean left side pick up uh on uh, on through the snow uh, ever onwards crackling in the ice frozen malice as much cost to frost claw as possible then we come down to sorry my apologies volley of glass and that's by increasing the cost of it even further so frost core can cost anywhere from 40 to 50 mana so it's always going to uh, apply spark charges then we come to the top right top side where we have uh, whenever you cast frost crawl you have a chance of proccing elemental nova with a 42 percent chance and then on top of that we're converting frost claw into a lightning based skill um, and that's why we're stacking lightning damage, of course, and spell damage. So then, as I said, Frost Claw is uh, proccing uh, Nova. Uh, by no means you need uh, 29 levels into it. Uh, more you just kind of need is about 20 levels. You come all the way to the left side, 
pick up a little, little mana cost reduction over there and then more important nodes picking up as much aoe as possible damage aoe and then come over here damage aoe the rest of the points just based on the uniques i picked up and i equipping them it's not it's not best in slot or anything by that, like matt that means i'm just using the uniques i have uh, you pick up spark charges so elemental nova hits have a chance to attach spark charge and again that's 100 chance more damage and then we pick up overcharge for even more damage aoe and damage over there so with your additional points next is another important interaction as you go with this variant this build there is a second trigger skill and this is from dragonoth's claw i'm probably dragonoth's claw i'm probably pronouncing that wrong my apologies uh 40 chance to cast lightning blast on crit with frost claw and because we're stacking mana i mean you're stacking uh, intelligence there's a node where you get increased spell crits per intel so more intel we have more cro uh, more chance we have to have a crit thereby we crit we cast lightning blast and why is that important this interaction is important because of one main reason you come all the way to the top right side of the tree front loaded cloud answer which applies spark charge on hits as well we go for final spark so it instantly detonates spark charges no no waiting so proc procs it uh detonates it you apply another spark charge detonates it, it quite a lot of damage one off the other then next we pick up mortal capacity so you get 200 percent more damage with spark charge and with the additional points you'll come down for double casting and triple quadruple casting so as you apply spark charges it, it just changes on the target and it does more and more and more and more damage from there you come down to the bottom right side continue going for more change and Lightning Blast can change back, chain back to the first target. Great ability as well. So you can't really use this interaction until you get the claw, or the one-handed dagger. Quite easy to farm. Next is uh, the build is pretty a three-button build, but we're going to the next ability. This is uh, Flame Ward. This is for a huge amount of ward generation. Um, nothing too crazy this side. Uh, definitely nothing too crazy. Uh, you come all the way to the most important nodes. Is the top right side with his dual ages rush this node as quick as possible um, and that will be sorted and as you're going you just press it you have two charges so nothing to like in a situation where your ward is dipping a bit just press it wait a bit press it again next is we come down to barrier i should have put my last point into barrier here barrier then you come down to prismatic buffer even less elemental damage taken and less hit damage so it's a pretty a defensive uh, skill next is you come all the way to the middle of the tree and just path around it get increased duration efficiency and then we just convert it to lightning for a little bit more damage by no means is mandatory you don't really have to take the side but it's nice to have everything covered in lightning next is more important side of the build because we costing so much mana um, we have to use focus and the, the nice thing with focus is that it gives you a portion of your mana back so the most important side of the tree is the right side increase mana regen uh, increase mana regen per missing mana then we come over here while maximum mana gain while at negative 20 percent so you get a big chunk of mana instantly and that of course we further increase it to instantly grant a mana equal to a portion of your maximum mana but focus has a longer cooldown so this is really really important so some of the times i can show you that as you using the skill your mana is going to start dipping quite a lot you get a lot of gen uh, war generation and then as you dip to the negative you proc that you get a huge amount of mana and you carry on casting it um, that's an important interaction that side uh, other than that it's pretty much a three button build you craft your uh, cast your frost claw uh, focus when you're low and of course <laughs> flame blast when you're low or in a, you know you're going to take a big hit and then on top of that you can use teleport not somewhere on the skill bar you can just use teleport to jump around and move around as your transversal skill nothing too crazy right and then onto the uniques like i said we talked about it Fragment of Enigma is a mandatory item for this build. That's like the minimum you need uh, to get the build going. A minimum you need uh, because of the scaling of the lightning damage. Um, and by far this build is not min-maxed. It's like day two, day three. Uh, CO, uh, Circle of Fortune. So as we're going, we're kind of utilizing what we have. And, and it's great so far. 
of course, once we get more and more light, uh, intel, intelligence and mana, this build will do even, do even more and more damage. So it's definitely going to ramp. I think we barely have any intel. Like 67 is extremely low. You should be getting around 100, 150, which is a gigantic increase uh, in intel, a gigantic increase in, in in damage. So you can imagine if we had 100 more intelligence, that would be 200 more lightning damage base for spark charge. The damage will just be amplified tremendously uh, so this is just a beginner like i would say entry version into it so next is the claw nothing too crazy about i'll put a link for the build guide and where to kind of farm these this is for the trigger of lightning blast and so on and so forth next is crest of unity i get just got picked up uh, and just trying it out five points to elemental nova and less damage taken from ignited shocked or chilled enemies kind of nice if you don't have this you could literally just use whatever exalted uh, helm you have that mana gained spent as ward um, a bit of intelligence as exalted intelligence and then reses would be completely fine as well so far i'm kind of liking this uh, grand unity uh, as a stepping stone by no means mandatory next is for an amulet either you want mana or you want um intelligence uh, sorry, non intelligence. You want mana or you want crit or you want elemental damage, spell damage. All of that stuff is fantastic. Uh, probably preferable lightning damage because you're primarily a light. Well, we are a lightning based build. Um, and other than that, just a bit of raises, fragility on hit, or even shred. If you can get some shred on this, absolutely great as well. Next is uh, again, and <laughs> this is kind of what I picked up, or well, not really picked up, got given. Um, so. The health is definitely, this is from the Nemesis side, <laughs> like we don't really care about the health. Uh, again, nice to have a bit, a bit, of mana, a bit of mana and a bit of elemental damage, one to all fire, lightning and cold skills, great. We never really directly class ele uh, cast elemental nova, so that's pretty much useless. Um, so literally any type of mana slash intelligence based exalted uh, base armor will be good. I'm probably going to switch this out. Just again trying it out seems okay it is usable and uh, nothing too crazy or too right home about next is uh, this mana this unique um mana 18 percent of mana spent gained as ward increased spell damage when you use a movement skill all these stats are tripled for four seconds so as you try running going around with teleport you'll get a huge burst of mana spent as ward and that's why you can see our ward kind of ramps up to three maybe even 4k which is really really nice um Again, flexible slot. You could get something with, I don't know why I have such a terrible ring on, but it shows you if we just get more intelligence, you don't want the HP. If you just get more intelligence, uh, well, probably more lightning damage. <laughs> wow, that's a terrible ring. I don't even know, didn't even notice that. Um, my goodness, crit strike. <laughs> I might even use something like this, a crit strike on it as well. Uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. So, <laughs> wow. I actually really have terrible rings. How's the belt? Just as bad. Okay, so terrible belt. So these these slots are definitely flexible to get more damage on more intelligence. I mean, if we get some good rolls on intelligence, we could probably get another 30, probably 16, maybe 12 to 16 on each roll. So another 30 intelligence on the ring. So that'll boost our damage tremendously. I'll probably look at doing that right after this. Uh, Twisted Heart. Again, we picked, we got. So, I mean, adding one to elemental skills is nice to have. Um, I think uh, Advent of the Erased Mage or something could possibly fit in here as well. Uh, again, it's very flexible, so by no means ne necessary. Something that you want spell damage, crit, mana, very flexible slot. Um, we're playing with scuffed gear and we're doing crazy damage already. Uh, the rest is pretty good because as you are like running around and you gain a bit of ward based on your man which is just a nice because you are at certain points channeling your skill so it's very nice to run around and just kind of do a couple charges and you get a decent burst of ward provides a decent amount of reses all over great pair of uh, boots by no means mandatory very very nice uh, gloves terrible gloves you just want intel mana um, also a chance to avoid being critted could be nice on the uh, on the gloves and again, this is not, this is like entry level, definitely not uh, anything like min max and we'll be looking out for um, improvements on the gear. I can see there's a lot of different areas to improve, my goodness, especially on the rings. 
Um, so intelligence, mana is your high priority item, a high priority stats you want to go for. Next is on for idols. It's pretty important in the build. You want in percentage mana and increased chance with lightning skill. Uh, don't have that many, so as you can see, we're kind of farming them ourselves. This is kind of ideally what you would want, and you would want as many as these as you can as possible. This is what I've picked up, and I'm just currently using as I go. Next is would be like a bit of raw detention, elemental res. You could even look at ages. Uh, lightning ages and why this is why important is because on the passive tree you get <clears throat> I'm pretty sure oh I actually should be speaking into this lightning ages so we'll actually get a decent amount of lightning damage and um, less damage taken from that node over there so I'm actually going to start speaking into that um, I think I'm going to take one out from there and we could probably start speaking a little bit more into that side and we get a little bit more uh, remove over here so we'll put the last two nodes into lightning attunement so you could consider going a bit of um, car speed with um, lightning achievement. Would be very nice. You could fit an idol in there. If you put another three stars, you could fit another idol. And yeah, this is just basically a rough, very rough guide. Of, not really great gear. We're doing decent damage, pushing 150, probably 200 corruption. No problem. Um, I know it's not a busted build, but it's definitely an interesting build. So this is just the beginning, like set, like the start of the build. So guys, expect a lot of upgrades. Your gear is terrible uh, in a number of different areas, and we can definitely improve it and make this build do a way more damage, especially with the right exalted um, bases and so on and so forth, guys. So, other than that, um, I wanted just to finish up by saying well done to HG. Um, great launch, I think. Overall, the build is pretty solid uh, with spark charges, pretty tanky, great clear, decent single target, and it's only going to scale more, more, guys. As you get better items, more you, more intelligence, and so on and so forth. Cap pretty quickly. Uh, all your rays are over capped. Nothing too crazy. Blessings are pretty much. I need to get more blessings. But whatever you get, whether you can get uh, lightning resistance, whether you can get drops, void resistance, or melee rays, whatever you can on blessings, pretty flexible. I think there's one for mana as well that's kind of nice is to get mana. Um, other than that, the blessings are very flexible. So pretty much a automated build for you. Everything, two of the two of the five abilities are just being propped for you, so you don't have to keep on spamming at this and that. You can kind of just focus on moving, using abilities, and focus on dodging and using your timed defenses from Flame Ward. So yeah, I know I talked way too long. I put a plan. I put everything in the POV. I mean, not POV and a uh, last epoch planner with maybe a loot filter, and we go from there, guys. So I hope you guys enjoy the build. I'll be doing an update probably tomorrow or the next day because we need way better items and we need to farm that stuff out, guys. So other than that, guys, enjoy. Take care and look after yourself. This is.